I'm Gabriel De La Rosa, the Digital Communications Coordinator for the Long-Term Ecological Research Network. At our All Scientists meeting coming up in September, we're hosting a good portion of our poster presentations online. To make this more engaging, we're asking virtual poster presenters to record a short video presentation walking viewers through their poster. There are many ways to put together a virtual presentation, but my goal today is to walk you through a few options. I'll cover two strategies, the bare minimum and a slightly more involved method that will produce better results. The bare minimum approach rec involves recording via Zoom, something everybody already knows how to do, so it's super easy to put one together. Whichever method you choose, there are a few good strategies and rules of thumb to making a great video presentation. The first is good audio. Presenters spend hours formatting their poster, choosing the right colors, and recording that video. But if the audio is hard to hear, has distracting background noise, or drops words unexpectedly, people are just going to stop listening to what you're saying. So whatever you do, pick a room that's distraction-free, that doesn't have a lot of outside noise. Turn off that fan, turn off the air conditioning, and just find a spot where you can be uninterrupted for a couple minutes. Another good tip is to always record your audio twice. Now, if you're recording on Zoom, this is really easy to do with a phone. You can just set up a voice memo on your iPhone or a similar thing on a different device and press record. That way, if Zoom for some reason cuts out a word or a phrase or has a weird glitch, you always have that backup audio to rely on. It takes a little effort to edit it in the right place, but it's much better than having a whole sentence be uh, unintelligible. The second tip is just to practice. You want to be smooth and polished when you're presenting your poster. You don't want any hiccups. You want people to be able to follow without a lot of pauses or breaks. So run through it a few times in the mirror with a friend and just get it really clean. Along these lines, it's always good to record multiple takes. This presents two advantages. One, you have a bunch of different options to choose from and you can pick the best, uh, the best take, but you can also splice together multiple takes so that you have one smooth narrative through the whole poster. The third are just some video rules of thumb. If you're recording on Zoom or if you're recording on a fancier camera, maybe your phone, it's always nice to have your face evenly lit, the person front and center, and not a distracting background behind you. Honestly, for poster presentations, your face is going to be in a small square in the corner, so this doesn't matter too much, but it's nice to just keep in mind. To make your poster presentation compelling, it sometimes helps to stand up. It sort of simulates giving an actual presentation more than just sitting in a chair, and makes you more lively and animated. Now, it might take some effort to get your camera up to eye level, and sort of find a big enough space where you can actually walk around with good audio, but you can always recruit a friend from the lab to help you out. So let's head over to the computer. I'll run you through, the, through these different options. We'll start with Zoom, which is a super simple way to get set up, and then I'll run you through a more complicated approach. So I'll go ahead and open Zoom and start a personal meeting like you normally would. Join with my audio and with my video. and then start screen sharing. I have my poster already queued up. And it took me a second to find where record was in this format, but it was under more for me. And of course you can record a little introduction before you start screen sharing that poster, but you might want to cut the futzing around in between. Of course, the disadvantages to Zoom are that the quality is a bit low and you don't really have that dynamic of control over what the viewer is seeing. That poster can be a bit grainy, that small text is a little bit hard to read on a computer screen, but it's good enough and users will have an opportunity to view that poster full size. And so when I'm done, I can stop the recording. And as I quit Zoom, that recording will download. So once it's converted, which only took a few seconds for me, you have a ready-to-go video presentation that combines both your actual poster and the words you're saying. But there's another really easy way to put together a poster presentation that lets you lead viewers through your poster in a little more controlled of a way. This requires uploading a PDF of your poster to your video editing software and overlaying a video of yourself speaking. You do want both. It's nice to have a person talking and some physical feedback, but this gives you a lot more control over what parts of the poster the viewer is looking at. It's really easy to do too. I'll show you how right now. So I've got iMovie open on my Mac. There's a ton of video editing software. There's one for Windows. There's some free versions out there. 
this is really simple and everything should be able to do this. So I'll go ahead and click import media. I'll have my both my poster and the video recording of me presenting that poster ready to go. I'll import them at the same time. And then drag that clip of me presenting into the timeline twice. This just makes it easier so when I have that cutaway, I have all the clips lined up already. I can crop out that little intro section, making sure it starts where I want it to. And maybe I'll clip the top clip so I have a full person intro, and then I'll have it cut away later. So it took me a second to actually find this. In iMovie, it's up. You click this little square thing at the top, and then you go to picture in picture. There's a couple other ways to do it. Premiere uses masking. Um, I don't know what the other ones do, but you can see it has a tiny little square where that initial video is, and the, bet, the, the spot behind it is just blank. This makes it really easy to drag your poster into that section below the overlay clip. iMovie did a weird thing where it put an animation on this, so I had to go find and turn that off. And this was up in the crop. If you just click fit, it turns into the whole poster. And now you can see I'm talking in front of that entire poster. It's a little bit of a nicer way to overlay things. Now, of course, maybe I do a general intro to that poster, but I really want people to focus in on one section. I had better luck dragging a second copy of that poster clip into the timeline to do this, but copy and pasting might work too. If you go to the crop settings and click crop to fit, you can pick the size of your screen. If you hold shift while uh, selecting the size of these corners, it keeps the same aspect ratio. So you're not cutting out weird portions of your screen that will be blank. You can see I had to do it twice because I forgot to hold shift the first time. But once you crop and press enter, you can see that the picture is now a, a tight crop on the portion of the poster that you want to focus on. So if I'm focusing on this power of long-term research section of my poster, the viewer can look and read those words and see those pictures in much greater detail. Now you can repeat this for other portions of the, the poster. I didn't add any animations or sliding between the two because it seemed like it was unnecessary and would have taken a lot of work, but feel free to get fancy with it. Once you've got your composition all ready to go, you're ready to export. I highly recommend using a quality of at least 1080p. In iMovie, exporting is not actually called exporting. It's called sharing. So you go to share, click YouTube and Facebook. It was exporting at really low resolution, so I had to scroll down to 1080p. Name it whatever you want. Save it in the right spot. It's a nice thumbnail of me. And you're ready to go. So the way you actually submit posters to our virtual platform is via YouTube. It's really easy to upload things to YouTube, but you do first need an account. Most LTER sites already have an account up and running, but if yours doesn't, a personal account works fine. It takes about five minutes to make one. I won't run you through it here. It's really easy to Google. And all you need is an uploaded video and the link to that video. You can drop that link in our virtual platform and the video should be viewable to all users. If you're having trouble with this, just reach out to the LTER network office. We have our own YouTube channel. We can host your video if need be, but hopefully a lot of people will be able to host these on their own. Again, if you have any questions about this process, if you need any technical help, feel free to reach out. Super excited to see you actually at the All Scientists meeting. So one last consideration, try not to keep these videos too long. We're giving you a rule of thumb to aim for three to five minutes. Um, it just lets people access more of the science going around the network. If people have shorter videos to watch, they can watch more of them. They can gain a broader exposure to science going on around the network. Anyways, thanks a ton for watching, and we'll see you at the ASM.